and welcome to High School Physics Explained and today I would like to go through on how an A scan is produced in an ultrasound or if you're an American listener uh, we're talking about a sonogram. So let's get started. So here I have a very simplistic version of an ultrasound. So I have here my uh, transducer. Uh, this is line here represents uh, the patient's skin. And then in here we have the body cavity where I've got two objects. And I have here an object that is of medium density. Uh, in this case, let's say an organ. And over here I've got something that represents something of greater density such as bone. And the first thing we need to understand is that um, when we place an ultrasound uh, transducer near the skin, uh, the whole purpose is to transmit sound through the body, which means that every boundary junction, we're going to get some transmission and we're going to get reflection. And the amount that gets transmitted and the amount that gets reflected is due to the variance in acoustic impedance. And um, just uh, for simplicity's sake, I guess what we'll, we'll do is we are going to simulate an ultrasound by actually placing a little bit of gel here and so forth. Now, what is the purpose of that gel? Well, if I don't have that gel, then we have the acoustic impedance from air going into skin. So the difference is so great. So as a result, most of it's reflected. Most of the sounds reflected, which means you get no transmission of any sound. So the whole purpose of the gel is to have a similar acoustic impedance to the skin and so that we have maximum transmission of um, uh, sound through. So as a result, we get this transmission of sound. Now, I'm going to highlight this by using a yellow pen. And yes, we'll get some reflection over here, but I'm for the sake of this uh, demonstration, uh, and I'm going to just change the color of my pen here so it's a little bit more visible. I'm going to understand that we're going to get basically a amount of sound coming over here, and it meets this target over here. Now, what happens, of course, is, is that we have a fair amount of um, sound by this stage because there's a big change in acoustic impedance, we then also have a certain amount returning. And of course, that is going to be picked up by our ultrasound, though I'll do that in a moment. Then, of course, there is going to be some transmission. So as a result, we're going to have some sound come through over here. And then, of course, from at this junction, you're going to get the same amount transmitted. Now, for the sake of our diagram, I'm just going to make it return like so. And then finally, we get a certain amount again transmitted again. And then we have again another uh, amount that is actually transmit, uh, reflected back. And so what you're getting here is you're going, the sound is traveling through. It's transmitted at various boundaries, but some gets reflected back. And of course, the amount that is reflected back, if you know your physics, is that that, that is equal to... Um, the amount, okay. the amount of the, so the amount that gets reflected back, of course, is determined uh, by this formula over here. So really, the amount of reflection is equal to um, Z two minus Z1 all squared over Z2 plus Z1 all squared, if you remember that formula. But what happens over here? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to represent now a graph of the intensity of how much is reflected back. And so what we're going to have, and we're going to start from this position over here, and I'm going to ignore the skin section, but strictly speaking, I should get a little bit of signals here from the signal to represent that I'm getting a little bit of reflection over here. And then at this junction over here, I'm going to get a bit of a spike over here to represent that I'm getting some sound reflected back. But of course, this is coming first. Then, of course, I'm getting this one. But of course, what happens here is I'm going to get a similar spike. And the, the fact that it is actually um, a um, same 
difference in acoustic impedances, uh, I'm going to get the same amount of spike. And of course, this spike is later because this one takes longer to get returned to over here. And then the last spike will be a much larger spike because as a result, this there is a greater amount of reflection over here. And so what you're getting here is a graph that shows two things. It shows you the strength of the intensity. So clearly, um, these areas here and here are the same in intensity because there is the same variance in acoustic impedance at these two boundaries. Um, but this one is arriving later simply because it has to travel further distance. This one, of course, has a greater intensity because there is much greater reflection at this boundary because there's a greater variance in acoustic impedance from here to here. And of course, it's the last to arrive because it's got to travel all this distance and so forth. So you get a very basic graph, but nonetheless very useful because the distances between them gives you an indication of the size. So if I were to draw a dotted line, uh, and it's not drawn accurately, but you can see that the size can be determined by simply the separation between these two objects here. But secondly, the intensity determines the density of the substance that you're looking at. So let's see how that works in uh, practice. So here is a situation um, and I have two eyeballs and, uh, and often A scans are used in ophthalmology and uh, they are used to determine uh, distances and various structures of the eyeball and the size of the eyeball. And I wonder if you can predict what will happen, what sort of graph would actually uh, result in these two eyeballs. And if you look very carefully, I've got a normal eyeball over here and I've got an eyeball here with some sort of tumor here. Well, let's play this out. Well, clearly we're going to have a point and this is the point where um, we have the boundary of the cornea and then you're going to get a peak over here to represent it hitting the lens and then we have another peak as it hits the other side of the lens and then we have relatively nothing happening um, as we until we get to the back of the retina and in this case I'd get a much stronger peak because the lens has a similar acoustic impedance to the vitreous humor that fills in here um, but there is variance, um, of course, and that's going to be picked up over here. And of course, here we hit the back of the retina and of course, uh, the other parts of the eye, namely the choroid and the sclera, and they're a lot denser than the uh, lens, and so therefore we're going to get a higher peak. But clearly, all of a sudden, we have the ability to measure the size of the lens, okay, and of course, also the distance between the lens and the back of the retina over here. But what if I'm then I take my um, transducer and do it with this particular case? Well, we're going to get a similar uh, boundary for the lens here and over here. That's not a problem over here. But then what we're going to get is we're going to get a peak here that is a small peak that is now going to represent the base of my tumor here. And then we have another peak here, which is going to represent the back of the retina. So now what well, you can see there's clearly differences between my two scans, my two A scans. And so as a result, we have clearly diff uh, 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 information about the size of this tumor and also the relative density of the tumor. So here we've got a bunch of peaks. And of course, each of these peaks, um, uh, their distances to tell you the size and the height of the peaks, of course, tells you um, the density difference. Of course, these height uh, dense, uh, of these peaks, we know, of course, as amplitudes. And of course, that is the name why we call it an A scan. It's based to the fact that it's based on an amplitude of a graph. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of information on an amplitude or an A scan. I hope you found that video useful. And remember, like, share and subscribe. Oh, and if you have a comment or a question, or you'd like a concept for me to explain to you, please drop a comment down below. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now.